check this out. We've got something really fun today. This is so amazing. Math and math. Oh man, again? 6.1. Reciprocal Quotient and Pythagorean Identities. Let's start off with, is sine x equal to cos x times tan x? Well, sine x is pretty basic, so I'm not going to do anything with that. Same with cos x, but if you remember tan is opposite over adjacent, or it's also sine x over cos x. Then we can see that the cos and the cos cancel on the right side, and we're left with sine x equals sine x. So is sine x equal to cos x times tan x? Yes, but we had a denominator on this side that we didn't have on this side. So on this side, we see that cos x cannot equal zero. When does that happen? Remember, cos is the x value as our points go around a unit circle. And so it would happen here and here. So that means x cannot equal pi over 2 plus, so this would be pi over 2, 90 degrees, plus pi, plus pi, plus pi. So any number of pi's going forwards or backwards, any number of pi's. So, but x cannot equal those values. And besides those values, everywhere else they will be equal. That was an example of a trigonometric identity. That's an equation that's true for all the permissible values of the variable. We have some reciprocal identities, which we've already seen when we first introduced cos cosecant theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta. And we have some quotient identities, and we use this one on the first slide, tan theta equals sine theta over cos theta, and cotangent theta equals cos theta over sine theta. Now you see in this quotient identity, only sine is in the denominator, so our non-permissible values would come from sine theta cannot equal zero. But if we define cotangent as one over tan theta, then we're going to get uh, really, this is 1 over sine theta over cos theta. And so you see we have sine theta in the denominator and cos theta. So neither of them is allowed to be equal to 0. So if we define it this way, we're going to have more non-permissible values coming from sine theta and cos theta than if we define it this way. Now, it turns out the guy who first invented cotangent theta as a function was Edmund Gunther. And he wrote it like this. So generally, we'll assume these non-permissible values. There's two potential identities here. We need to find which one is true and find its non-permissible values. So for the first one, we got cosecant theta. Let's rewrite that as 1 over sine theta. And whenever we're dealing with these equations, it's useful to break them back down into sine theta and cos theta, our most basic trig functions. Tan theta, for instance, would be sine theta over cos theta. And we have it all over cos theta. This side looks pretty simple, 1 over sine theta. So I'm going to leave that. This side here, I'm dividing by cos theta. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So sine theta over cos theta multiplied by the reciprocal. And these do not look the same. I've got 1 over sine theta and sine theta over cos squared theta. So this is not true. This is not an identity. I'm going to go back and say it all. Not an identity. Let's try the other one here. Cosecant theta. Again, that's 1 over sine theta. On this side, we got cotangent theta. So that would be cos theta over sine theta, all over cos theta. Let's do the same thing as we did before, multiply by the reciprocal. So we've got cos theta over sine theta, and this is cos theta over 1. So multiply by the reciprocal would be 1 over cos theta. Now you can see that the cos thetas cancel. Aha, and we're left with 1 over sine theta, 
equals 1 over sine theta. So this is true. This is an identity. Now, the two sides do have different non-permissible values because there's a cos here in the denominator that isn't here on this side. But an identity is true for all permissible values. Let's find the non-permissible values here. Cos, can, cos theta cannot equal zero. And we see that sine theta, or cotangent theta here, sine theta cannot equal zero either. And pay attention, this is a good one to remember, happens quite a bit with these. These would be all our quadrantal angles. So where cos is zero would be the y-axis, and where sine is zero would be the x-axis. So that means that theta cannot equal pi over 2 n, where n is an integer. What happens if we try to verify using a test value instead of using identities and changing the equation? So let's try to verify these using theta equals pi over 4. So the first one we would have uh, 1 over sine pi over 4. And we'd have tan pi over 4 and cos pi over 4. And sine pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So this would be 1 over root 2 over 2. Tan pi over 4 would be 1. And cos pi over 4 would be root 2 over 2. This looks like it worked. And that's the problem with using a test value in these. It's a great way to prove that it's not an identity, but it's not a very good way to prove that it is an identity. So, looks good, but isn't. Graphically verifying the identities is a very good way to check very quick. It's a great way to start off if you're told to prove an identity. Check it graphically to see if you should be able to prove it or not. So the first one you can see that the reason pi over 4 worked was because that was a spot that actually the two graphs were equal. But you can see that the graphs are a much different shape. The second identity when I graphed the two, the left side and the right side, they created something that was completely similar. In fact, the second graph completely covered the first graph, so you only see the red lines here. Because test values can deceive us, and graphs may not show the whole picture, they don't count as a proof that the equation is true. We will have to do that algebraically. Pythagorean identities, we know we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared for any right triangle. And if we use the unit circle and make a right triangle on the unit circle, then we'd have x, the x value of our coordinate, squared x squared plus y squared equals 1 squared, or the radius squared. And we also know that our x value of this point is cos theta and our y value is sine theta. So we can change this to cos theta squared plus sine theta squared equals 1. Now, we can write the Pythagorean identity this way or in these other two ways. Now, how did they get from here to here? Pause the video and see if you can figure out this form of the equation and this form. All right, let's see. To get cotangent squared theta from cos squared theta, we just need to divide by sine squared theta. Divide every term here. So cotangent squared theta plus 1 equals cosecant squared theta, because 1 divided by sine squared theta is cosecant squared theta. And this one, we just did the opposite, uh, as in divide by cos squared theta instead. So cos squared theta divided by cos squared theta gave me 1. Sine squared theta divided by cos squared theta gives me 10 squared theta. And that means that 1 divided by cos squared theta is secant squared theta. So these are the three different forms of the Pythagorean identity, and you can use any of these three in the future. 
Let's practice simplifying trigonometric expressions. The first one here we have cotangent theta in the numerator. Let's replace that with, with cos theta over sine theta. In the denominator we have cosecant theta. We can replace that with 1 over sine theta. And cos theta is just fine. Now if you notice the numerator and the denominator are actually the same, so they both cancel out with each other and we're left with 1. So this expression simplifies to 1. However, since we uh, got rid of all of our information here, we need to record our non-permissible values. So theta cannot equal sine is in the denominator, as well as cos is in the denominator. So neither of them can equal 0. That means pi over 2n, where n is an integer. Next one, we've got secant theta. That could be replaced with 1 over cos theta. And we've got tan theta, and that could be replaced with sine theta over cos theta. Now if we multiply numerator and denominator by cos theta, we can get rid of all the coses in this, and we're just left with 1 over sine theta. And it's fine to write it like that. If you prefer, though, we could write it as cosecant theta. And we have to record our non-permissible values. So theta cannot equal. We have a cos in the denominator, and we have a sine in the denominator. So it turns out to be the same as the first one here, pi over 2n, where n is an integer. We want to use the identities to simplify this expression. In the numerator, we have 1 minus secant squared x. And hopefully that looks familiar. In the last Pythagorean identity we had was 1 plus tan squared theta equals secant squared theta. So there's the 1 in the secant squared that we need here. Let's rearrange this identity. So minus secant squared theta on both sides and minus tan squared theta on both sides. Oops. And there we go. And this gives us our 1 minus secant squared theta, and it now equals negative tan squared theta. So we can use this identity to change the numerator in our expression. And it would be negative tan squared x over sine squared x. And we can change tan. We know that that is negative sine squared x over cos squared x all over sine squared x. We can see the sine squared x and the sine squared x will cancel. We're just left with negative 1 over cos squared x. And if we prefer, that's okay. We could write it though as negative secant squared x. And since we had cos in the denominator and sine in the denominator, then we're going to have x cannot equal pi over 2n, where n is an integer. Whenever we're proving trigonometric equations, we're not allowed to do our regular algebra and cross over the equal sign. So I can't uh, add one on both sides of this equation. So we want to prove this equation. We've got to work with the left side exclusively, and then independently work with the right side and get them to a point where they are the same. Also, you probably, whenever you're asked to prove something, you probably want to graph it. Graph this side, graph this side, and see if they are equal, so you don't waste hours trying to prove something that isn't actually true. So the numerator of this looks fine, 1 over sine x, but it's the denominator that I'm going to rearrange. Cos squared x looks familiar if it's with a 1. It looks kind of like pieces to my Pythagorean identity. So I'm just going to rewrite this and put those guys together. And the minus sine x I'll just write over here. On this side, I'm going to just write this as negative 1 over sine x. That looks pretty simple, so I'm not going to do anything else to the right side. Next, this 1 minus cos squared x. Remember the first Pythagorean identity? It was cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. 
And if I just rearrange this by subtracting cos squared x on both sides, then sine squared x equals 1 minus cos squared x. That's some good news. Most likely we want to turn all of the trig functions into the same ones. So this is ideal. So we got 1 minus sine x over sine squared x. So this changes into that. And nothing happens to the right side of this equation. Now we got a common denominator here, so we can factor out the sine. So 1 minus sine x in the numerator, sine x in the denominator. Factor that out leaves me with a sine x minus 1. And looks mysteriously close here, this, this binomial in the numerator and the binomial in the denominator. So I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to factor out a negative. Factor out a negative from this binomial means this one turns negative, this one turns positive. And now they are the same. This binomial is the same as that binomial, and they can cancel out. And on this side, I'm left with 1 over negative sine x. And on this side, I'm, I'm left with 1 over sine x. And these are now the same, and I can say the left side equals the right side. So this is a true identity. This was part of Trigonometry 6, Prove Trigonometric Identities using all of these other identities. We just did the first ones, Reciprocal, Quotient, and Pythagorean today. Try these questions out. See if you know what you're doing.